invite someone to sit here all the time, so uh, I will do Reiki on you and introduce you to my spirits and then while I'm talking. So we take turns and if some, and you can do multiple rounds if you like. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm not very good with names, so you'll have to remind me the names. Uh, Bianca. Bianca, thank you. All right, so um, I'm just doing mostly channeling, which is kind of mediumship. And my channeling is very kind of halfway. I'm, I'm not leaving the body. I'm staying here, but I'm inviting my friendly spirits. And they come. And aliens, and they come. So I'm here, and I'm shifting in and out. Thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for coming today. I'm blessed with your presence, and we are blessed with the presence of all helpers here. Today is a wonderful day. The energies are very good. The hopes are nice. And the darkness is also coming, the evening, the fall. And the darkness is a gift also. The darkness is removing everything extra and leaving what is most important. Hold on to your core, onto your core vibration. And look for purity. Look for beauty. The darkness which comes over the world hides everything extra and leaves the most brightest lights and the shiniest beauty. Look for beauty outside and look for beauty inside. The beauty will sell you. It will hold you. It will let you hold yourself. It is a vortex, the point of stability in you. All right. The Galactic Reiki is an idea of healing. There is many ideas here. There is many ideas. But the main idea I focus today on is the idea of the new art of healing. And the main understanding here is that you don't have to do much. You don't have to know much. But you have to be able to tune in to the right vibes to tune in and into right frequencies. And when you get there, everything goes by itself. It goes easy. You work with intelligent, conscious energy. You work with intelligent, conscious beings, entities. You make them friends, and they're always there to help you. And what I'm doing now, I'm introducing you to them in a gentle way. There is nothing spooky here. Very gentle. And whenever you want to call for them, you call for them. Whenever you want to go on your own, they are there to help, but they listen to your wishes. There is no reason to be afraid. Other way, you know, invite them for help every time you need their help. They are here, eager to be of help. Hmm. And that's the main introduction. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, Christian. Um, what's your favorite color? That's a diagnosis. I'm sorry for saying that, but most people know their favorite color. And there is nothing wrong, but look, seek, search for it. Search for it. Play with the colors. Good enough. <laughs> and uh, 
Are you a healer? What do you do for healing? Okay. It's a, acceptable. What brought you here? Reiki session. So there is a Reiki session will, will happen here later? Ah, I didn't realize. So you came back to that vibe. Thank you. It's a, an honor. Nice. So you don't do Reiki yourself, right? No. All right. So we'll start from the very easy intro. Everyone is a healer. When you say I'm not a healer, is it's basic, basically saying I'm not doing it officially, but everyone is a healer, obviously. If you survive to that age, you're a healer. <laughs> you heal yourself, at least. You heal yourself. Uh, do you meditate? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah. When you go to sleep, do you do any prayers, mantras, affirmations, yeah. invite invitations? Breath is enough. It's a good start. So when you go to a meditative state, the last thing is, which is in your control is breathing. And don't rush into the, on, onto the other side. If you feel like it doesn't go easy, you just stay here and enjoy the transition period before shifting to the other side. And when the spirit comes, when the spirits come, you will know by um, light which comes and the silence. Your chatter in your mind just psh, disappears and you think, without words, you think, oh, silence, wonderful. It feels so good and the breathing becomes easier. So if the chatter stops, that's kind of transitional, transitional period when you shift from 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 half been half half a dream to to another side um, before going to meditation um, it's nice to have an idea what do you want and obviously you want many things so pick one and the main formula is first think do things do gratitude Thank the spirits, thank the source, the god, the, the goddess for, for what you are here, for the gifts they already gave you. And, um, and then you invite. So first thank and then invite. Uh, the old prayers is asking, begging, begging for forgiveness and things of that sort. But but then you you're welcome. And then you just just invite. So whatever it is you invite. And invitation is a wonderful thing because uh, on one hand you you're always entitled to invite an offer. So invitation is basically an offer. You always are allowed to offer. Like you always are entitled to ask people, do you want my help? Or do you need my, I'm looking for a job, do you need my help? Something of that. Or uh, I need help, do you want to help? It's an offer. And then you respect their decision. If they want to offer, that's fine. Uh, if they want to help, that's fine. If they if they don't feel like, and if they don't feel like that, it, it's fine as well. So you are in a state of allowance. You allow them to make their decision. You are not forcing that, them one way or another. And it works wonderfully with spirits, and it works wonderfully as a prayer to God. You offer them yourself, but you don't 
force their response in any way. So that's a perfect uh, statement for a prayer. Just saying, thank you, the goddess, for all the bliss, all the help I get for the life. And I invite your help in healing myself. That's it. Very simple. Thank you and invite. And then hands. Everybody's hands are healing. Everybody's hands have, I'll step aside, but you stay here. They will, you will have others working on you. Everybody's hands have energies flowing through them. And it goes from the source. You can imagine that it comes from the sun. And also you can imagine that it comes from the earth. And that is pretty much true. From the core of the earth, there are very nice etheric vibrations come to your heart, come into your heart. And from the sun, there are vibrations come into your heart. And then they go through the channels. You might call them meridians. You can, might call them nerves. They go to your palms and fingers. And here we go, go to Reiki and galactic Reiki. So in traditional Reiki, you mostly heal with a whole palm, and usually it's flat or a little bit rounded. And the energy is very diffused. It's golden diffused energy, which is basically just shining and healing everything negative. Uh, the aliens, humanoid aliens, which have hands and fingers, use a lot, they use that energy which comes from the fingertips. You also have that, everybody has it. So that energy you mostly use for actively doing things. In advanced Reiki, there is so-called uh, surgery, energ energetic surgery, etheric surgery, psychic surgery. It's called psychic surgery, where you kind of take out the negative energy and just kind of dump it on the floor. Just take it out, dump it on the floor, just in the air. Take out the negative energy. If there is pain or a headache, they just kind of gently take it out and dump it on the floor. So that is the same principle, but you also can heal with the same with the fingers. So, so that's how you work on that. You, what, what I did, I went with the fingers and touched the uh, the bone, and I kind of go for that bone, and it is. Very much like Star Trek mind melt. I don't know if you are fans of Star Trek, but in Star Trek uh, there are Vulcans which do mind melt. They put their hand like that on uh, another person and they melt the mind. And I just love this mind melt. It works. It actually works. I connect this way to the mind of another person and often I can bring the answers. So for me, the Reiki session or galactic Reiki session is usually a conversation, especially the first, the first part of the Reiki is conversation. I ask the same question. Usually, what's your favorite color? And Christine, what's your month and date of birth? Yay. My daughter is September 25th. She's older than you. <laughs> uh -huh. So the vibe of 20 seconds, every 20 second plus minus one is a hybrid vibe. You have the previous sign and the following sign right there meeting. So the person usually carries the both vibes of, the, of both signs. and. That helps to connect and understand some of the vibes. And the vibe of Libra is very airy, very social. Libras are fatally, fatally, that's the word, fatally obsessed with keeping everybody happy and together. <laughs> it's like, a, how, how do you say it? Dogs which are herded sheep. Is it right? Herded dogs, yeah. Whatever. 
20 seconds are both, usually. Do you, do you feel that about yourself, that you want to, the company to be happy and like one of your main missions is just to keep everybody happy together in a company? Uh huh. Yeah, that's that's what you borrow from the following. And the Virgas, on the other hand, very cre are very creative in finding the problems where everybody else doesn't see any problems, and just making it very creative kind of creative solutions. Uh, like there are two, three trees. There is no even forest. Like three trees, they would find it a forest and get lost in the three trees and be very creative about that and make a lot of learning out of this simple experience. So this is wonderful about Virgos because they, on the, other, on the same note, they are very grounded, very practical. They are always worried about, you know, philosophical matters, but at the same time, very practical. The money are under control, the jobs are under control, they're uh, houses in good shape and and so on. That's so when you just connect through the, to to that energy, it is nice. Is it any true about the, about you? Yes. No. Is it true about you? What I just said about Virgus? Yes. <laughs> All right. So and then you just keep walking and focusing on fo focusing on the on the bones. That would be part of the of the galactic reiki and um, and connecting to the bone structures to the bones just kind of there is always like a bone often a bone you can just put the finger on it and you and then the second trick you do is you thank you you send the energy back and forth between two hands uh, so you you are a healer. You you know the healing, right? Are you the healer? Are you a healer? Um, no. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you're not actively offering healing. What's your name? Claire. Claire. What's your favorite color? And day, the month of birth. Uh, huh? And my son is May 28th, which is a different sign. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so, how do you? So how do we deal with the energy? So the energy flows easily. So the energy flows easily. What what I do is I initiate you into galactic energies and after the initiation you start basically that's the invitation. You sit on this chair, you invite the energies to come, invite friendly spirits to work with you. And what I give you is the the energy basically. It starts flowing you in the following days, it starts, if you wish so. If you don't wish, it just doesn't flow. But if you wish so, you invite it. <sighs> just invite it. And it starts flowing, and it flows both through the middle of the palm and through the fingers. Through the palm, it flows. The golden energy, through the fingers, it, it's like silver energy. Sharper, more creative, more masculine. Golden is feminine, silver masculine. So you can do things proactively. You really wish to do something, you do it. And then it starts flowing. How does it feel? Um, to me, it feels, I don't see it, but it feels like different vibrations, very physical ones. It's Sometimes it is knowing, sometimes it is vibrations which is non-physical, more like, more like just something like zzz in, in your mind, in your body, but very often it's very, very physical. It's like, like, 
blow on your head now, if you, if, if you may, and you will feel just a little, little blow, and you feel that the, there is like a special vibration of that blow. And sometimes it, feel, it feels goosebumps. Goosebumps is usually starts from, from the legs, and I know it's a high-level spirit is coming. High-level spirit. God, high-level high spirits. And another one is heaviness, heaviness in the, in the head. Uh, often there is a spirit that comes through the right side. Often it's like the ear is blocked and you feel like the spirit is just talking to you. I don't hear the voice, but I feel he's coming on the ear. Sometimes it's on the front, sometimes it's in the on the forehead, and it kind of becomes just a little heavy, and you know it's not physical, but it feels physically. And the most happy sounds, the most happy vibrations are in their, in their body. When you put your head on the body, there is like that heat, like, like warmth that comes like pretty deep, and there is, there is a buzz which goes like, 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 like um, it, it sounds funny, but it sounds like <coughs> like like a truck, very very low low uh, vibration truck, mm, like trash trash collection truck. How do you call it? Garbage collection truck, and um, and that's that's a very healing vibration. You know, vibrations are the, uh, are very healing, right? Um, many vibrations, most of vibrations are very healing if they are taken so. Um, in, in traditional Chinese medicine, there are healing sounds, which sounds like very high frequency sound, like the highest you can make, like lower, like lower, like lower, like and then there is uh, purring sounds of cats, which some people can reproduce. I can do it. I, when I do Reiki, I do it. But you have to like meditate to really get get into that sound. Like it sounds like <sighs> right now I'm making with my lips. But it, when it comes from inside, from the from the throat, it's much more healing. And actually, you can use it for healing yourself if if you meditate and you need some some healing. And especially when you do your Reiki, if you feel like you really need to open the energy flow for yourself and the, the, the patient and it doesn't flow, you just do that sound. Obviously, you have to warn the patient that it's intended, it's nothing, nothing weird, but you do that. And it opens, wonderfully opens the channels and the energy flows way better. And you just feel like right now, I feel it's, it's more like electric energy, like in the fingers, electric. It's just fl flows. And you likely know, maybe you know, that in Reiki you don't give much of your energy. You just take it from the universe and send it where it's supposed to go. And your heart takes a lot of energy. It feels happy, but it takes a lot. Your heart just, right now I just found that spot where it just flows really well. And usually I just invite the spirits, when I start my healing, I invite the spirits to work with me. And and they come and they say, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's what I say. And then I just move around different places. And when I find that, that it flows well, then I stay in that place for a while. Until kind of I ask myself, should I stay longer? And I say, oh, it feels so good to stay here. I would stay longer. And then I ask, hmm, after a few minutes, should I stay longer? And I say, yeah, now it's possibly the time to, to move on. So you have an internal dialogue. In Reiki, it is often, always, a dialogue. Do you really want to be, or it's like dilemma, do you want to be a channel for energy, or do you want to be actively healing? So being a channel is a very feminine position where you just allow and invite, and then after that, it happens by itself. You just channel existing energy. and. Active would be very masculine energy, masculine principle. You just go and heal like a doctor. Take out the bad, put in good, find the hole, uh, fix the hole. Mental, but very active. 
obviously everybody has both energies, so you shift back and forth. That's ideal. You shift back and forth, shift between uh, golden energy in the palm, in the palm, and silver energy in the fingers, between um, allowing energy to flow and then helping it, directing it, because when you, even when you really want something and when you direct it, you just realize you are serving and you are directed by the spirits. You're a tool, conscious tool with a free will, but you're still a, a tool in the divine will, divine providence. All right. So some people are, you know, some people are sensitive when you touch them. Doing this is also a wonderful way of connecting. This is almost as, as equal, almost equal to touching. So you're kind of doing the same energetic work on the head while you're not touching. And right now there is wonderful flow of energy right here. And I thank you spirits for doing this. Uh, how are you? How is everybody? You good? You all with me? Any questions so far? You stay silent and everybody else, <laughs> everybody else, I invite questions. Oh, thank you for asking. Yes, I forgot. You just kind of play and um, I feel it when it goes. So I don't move the, mo the hands at all. And sometimes I just discover but it, that it oscillates back and forth between two hands. And when it does oscillate, I just realized it's something within me is doing that. And I have a control over when it goes, jumps between one and one and another. In Reiki, the energy always goes back and forth. It's always two directional. But in the hands, it just feels like in this hand, in this hand, in this hand, in this hand. And when I do the healing, like during meditations, I often have pains in my body. They often kind of wandering pains, and like you, you go do a lot of things, like teaching a class, working hard, or taking a lot of responsibility and things of that sort, making decisions. You accumulate those things, which fears. Basically, these are fears, and these are very practical fears. You, you know, if you become fearless, you. You do stupid things. You have to be practical. You have to really know that this is good and this is, you have to like really be careful, right? So these little things, li these little emotions, they accumulate. And Reiki is a wonderful tool to get them out, to clear them out, and just to feel fresh again, young again, uh, being able to work and so on. So how do you do self Self-healing. Just a second, I will wrap it up. Okay, you stay here. I will grab another chair and invite one more person. All right. When you're ready, you can go, but I think you're good. Some, 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 some spirits work on you right now. When you feel that they're done, you can go. Whoever wants to come here will do the self-healing demonstration. Thank you. All right. Again, I have to start a little bit from the head. And the energy is very different, right? Of course. All right, so when you do self-healing, my favorite position is this. That is like working on the bottom of the belly. And this is working on the top, which is the, the diaphragm here, the diaphragm. And here you have the spleen on the left, liver on the right, and kidneys on the back, a little bit above right here. And um, you can lay down on the, on the back, and that's a wonderful position when you lay down, and I feel the energy flows right now. So that would be a good position to work on your digestion, sexual organs, uh, all other organs which are nearby. Um, and obviously their human worries are usually sitting right here. Uh, usually that's where they end up. They kind of accumulate there. And you clear them out. What you meditate on is, if you have a pain, you breathe, 
and when you breathe in, you take the energy from the universe, the healing energy, the prana, the chi, the energy, the energy of the sewers, the bliss, the life energy, you take it in. And when you breathe out, you send it usually, first place to send it out is to the heart. And second place to send it would be to the place where it hurts, whatever it is. You don't have to have hands over there, then you can just go there. And imagine that you inflate a ball of golden energy right there, and you should feel warmth and just kind of heaviness when it kind of dissolves, the pain dissolves, and usually then it is released through all possible ways. It can release through the cough later, or through liquids which come out of your body through any ways, and um, any, any other, any other like, just they just disappear. So that's the way it, it goes. And then you go into meditation and you just can keep the hands there. And after a while, obviously laying down on, on, on the, lying down on the back is, is uh, the circulation kind of stops after a while, you need to turn, so, so turning on the side or on the stomach is just fine, but, but you usually start from laying on, straight on, on the back, it kind of makes your body symmetrical, and symmetry is easier for the spirits to come in. And the second position for the hands would be right here, right there. And that's how you work on the lower heart and higher, higher heart. Obviously, the heart is absolutely essential. That's the center, and that's the green chakra. I don't see colors, but if the person says that their color, favorite color is green, it's usually, I feel the energy flowing right now, it usually means that they use their heart chakra a lot for their life. And interestingly, the, you, you know chakras, right? Do you? Chakras, um, they have colors from red to purple, from bottom to top. And usually these colors correspond to, usually, not, of, not always, but in many cases, to favorite color of the person. And the favorite color would be the strongest color, the strongest chakra they use. So the bottom chakra would be connection to the ground, to the earth, very basic things. Uh, survival, 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 control over survival, food, simple things. And next one would be orange sexual, that would be animal things like competition and reproduction and physical touch, physical activity. Next one would be solar plexus, which would be yellow. That would be traditional human values, hierarchy, like hierarchy of dogs, hierarchy of humans, uh, trust, mistrust, all those things, truth, not truth, all those things. Um, heart is emotional, heart is trust. Without logic, heart is green, and it is more like something which is above the words. It's really hard to express through the words. It's more poetry, music, art, sen sensation, feeling. That's the, the main area of the heart chakra. The blue would be the throat chakra. It's communication with spirits, aliens humans, logic, expressing yourself through writing, speaking, all those things. The third eye chakra, the brain chakra would be all mental things, association with high level spirits and mm, angels. And obviously the crown chakra is direct, direct line to God. Everybody is connected to all levels of reality, lower levels through lower chakras, high levels directly to... So you are a composite, multidimensional composite, multidimensional vortex, multidimensional flower, a living being who is always connected to every level. Nice energy is flowing. 
So let me do the, the, the palms. Okay, um, any questions so far? Give me more questions. I need a dialogue. What comes to your mind? Any topic? Yes, thank you. All right, galactic Reiki. I know you would ask that. Um, that was what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> thank you for for for, pro for the prompt. All right. Um, all right. So where do we start? I searched for it for a while, and uh, my search was through healing first. Many, most of my friends came to the galactic friends through healing path, and it flows wonderfully now. So you do the healing, and then and then they come. And uh, I was eager to find the answers for my studies on healing, so I was talking to different mediums and. And I was always interested in what, what's, what is on the other side. And usually I was afraid, it is a tradition in Western society to be afraid of all these spirits and energy. So I was afraid and that it didn't come easy. But basically for me the discovery was, I read a book uh, of Lynn McTaggart, it was called The Field. The Field. And there it is so the science, but it's the science described, but basically the science of the very advanced science about different psychic phenomena. And it was so clear that it is absolutely real, so much evidence from many directions on many topics. And when I closed the books, the book, there was nothing about aliens there, but I said to myself, hmm, next thing, so let me check out the aliens. And I, as I usually do for my research, I just go on YouTube and type in aliens. And the things that came looked so realistic, so true to me. This image of the greys on the tube, the grey aliens on YouTube, just looked so realistically to me. They, they evoked so inner, so much of inner remembrance that I became obsessed about that. For a week I was digging through the YouTube and different sites trying to find what is true and what is not, what is fake and what is not. And then, um, and then, and then I became sick, and I was sick for half a year with all different types of pains and stuff. But I already was into Reiki. I had a Reiki healer, so so it was easy to heal. I just, you know, was going to Reiki healer, paid for my sessions, and I was kind of okay. So that sickness was just the fear. Of just different memories came up. So I think, I still don't know for sure, but I think I, I dealt with them in my childhood, with the greys, and that's why I have so much memory of them. Um, but they just, just, they just were so creepy, so familiar. <laughs> I still don't know what the, what's the answer. In any case, and then I became just an expert. I started talking about that, giving talks, and uh, my main topic was how is it possible that we are from Earth, our genome is related to all other animals on Earth, and then we, the, human, the humans have evolved, evolved on Earth, I know for sure. And how is it possible that the aliens looking like humans come from outside? That didn't make any sense for me. It's like two causes, two origins for the same humanity doesn't make a lot of sense. I know the answer now, but... But that was the part of the story. How do you, how do you, piece together that story? So, and then at the Reiki session, uh, they came to me through a channeler. Like I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking from Max, from Max mostly. But oh, they came to me through a channeler, who just said, uh, "They always, you know, many many healers said, do you know that the aliens are in the room right now?" And I said, "Yeah, interesting." Which kind? How do they look? Blah, blah, blah. So when, when the next time my friend said, you know, you know the aliens, I said, sure, obviously. And um, different mediums gave me a little bit of messages, but this time they started speaking to me directly. They said, hello. And um, by that time I already wrote a book about them, so I, I, was, I already was an expert. It was 2000. 
13, 12, 13, 2013, two years ago. They just came to me and said, hello, we're here. And what would you say if they say, no, if you were in that situation, what would you say? Say again? What else? For example. Okay, what else? All right. Uh, yes. Ah. I was prepared. I waited for that. I said, I'm applying for a visit on your ship. <laughs> that was the first thing I said. Oh, like maybe. I said, I'm honored, and then I'm applying, because they have a big bureaucracy there, for sure. Their bureaucracy is way more efficient. Usually they give you the answer within hours, not months. <laughs> but they have multi-layered bureaucracy, and rules, and galactic rules, and all of that stuff, diplomacy. Um, so they said, okay, we'll consider that um, we need to make a chemical test on you. So we know that, you know, medical test, that, that you're suitable. Okay, and so we had a little conversation. They introduced themselves, they said that they follow me for already, at that time it was 10 years, and, uh, they, you know, they help here and there, blah, blah, blah. Um, so next morning I woke up, I had marks on my body. That was a wonderful proof that thing is real, and they stayed there for half a year, these marks. They were pretty much geometric, more like big um, wasp bites, or how do you call it, big uh, bee bites. But uh, they were like a little bit in the geometric pattern, and they appeared right after, and they stayed for half a year, which is, would be unusual for bites, right? That was, I mean, other than that, they didn't give me many proofs. They, I know, I never had like real something which I can show to others, never like that. Little here, little there, miracles here and there, but, but not more than that. So at some point I was like, oh, that's enough. You, if you don't want to show yourself, I'm out of that. <laughs> they said, whatever, okay. <laughs> but then again, you, you decide, you know, that's the most interesting thing that happens to me. Why don't we con continue? So I continue and then they give you wonderful proofs of wonderful messages, wonderful people just, and you know, miracles happen for me every day now. Simple miracles, simple, but um, synchronicities like computer acts interesting. I get interesting messages, text messages on the computer and stuff, m emails and stuff, simple things. And uh, and they come when you invite them in the meditation. And once I had a, I invited them to come more tangibly, and it was absolutely undeniably. I felt myself in two bodies at the same time. Somebody entered my body kind of holographically, but it was very, very tangible. I was first scared a lot because that was a sensation I had in my childhood nightmares. Unmistakable. Uh, it was like, uh, for me, it sounded like I'm very little and the earth is so big, the planets are so big and I'm so scared, it's so dangerous. That's the shift, dimensional shift, which feels like things are way out of proportion and I'm completely out of control. So first I got this childhood nightmare and then I decided hmm, maybe that's my friend's aliens. That's how it was supposed to be. Dimensional shift would feel like that. How about I don't be afraid? <laughs> That is the main thing which you should do if you deal with them. Just, how about I don't be afraid? Like, and that happens to many of my friends. Like, here is an example. Somebody, uh, let me finish the story and I will give you an example. So the, the, the body stayed in me, or I stayed in that second body. It was very foreign, very fat, very short and wide, like triple wide. And I think... I didn't move any fingers, but I moved my own fingers, so I knew I am in my body, and I was sure I'm in another body, and I wasn't asleep for sure. Oh, it was absolutely, and then later they confirmed that it was a visit by an invitation, and I know basically the planet and so on, the race who came, so these are some of my friends. I, I had it only once. I want to do more of that. I invite more of that. 
All right. So, but that was like one of the biggest confirmations I got. It was not by not in the meditative state. It was just in the middle of the night. I wake up. I got this visit for 15 minutes, and I'm completely awake. There is nothing there to to doubt. Um, uh, a couple of examples, like here's the first example. A girl is often taken by the aliens, but at some point they take her and spiritually maybe, or physically it's not clear in that story, but they take her and they start dancing with her and then they start spinning and she said, stop, 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 but they keep spinning and holding her hands very tightly, so uh, it's painful, so she was angry at them. So she tells them to to stop and put her back. So she wakes up and she is very angry at them, right? And then later it, it, it was explained that, that the technology didn't work and um, the dimensional shift didn't work well. So they had to hold her hands so to prevent losing her in dimensional shift. And the spinning was just mis misalignment of the technology, right? So their intentions were perfect. They, they weren't evil. They were friends, but sometimes things happen. And there was another story. Um, again, aliens came, and the woman started running away because she was afraid, and sh and they started following her. But but later, you know, they discovered that it was herself coming to herself, her other 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 self, other incarnation, parallel incarnation herself in the, in the alien body. And um, it just was a misunderstanding. You know, she runs away and they follow her just because they thought that she wanted to run and and it was like a game. She didn't real, they didn't realize she was scared. Things of that sort. So, so uh, stand your ground. Don't run away. Find it positive and it will be positive. You define your reality. All right, my aliens are very nice. Uh, my most known aliens are Pleiadians. Um, Pleiadians live on the planet. Okay, Pleiades is a big star cluster. You can find it, especially in the winter sky. It's very visible. Lots of small stars. And, uh, and now there is a, a, a phone application which allows you to find different stars. You just point the phone on the sky, on the sky that shows you the stars. I think the best one is uh, star map and star chart, two, two best applications. The energy flows well right now. Um, what else? Um, Pleiadians. Mm. The images, if you just Google the images, they're, they're nice. Uh, somebody here was fascinated with Orion, right? Uh, Pleiadians are from Orion. Uh, Pleiadians are of Nordic race. Usually they're taller than humans, but very much human looking, very much related to humans. Nordic race. I guess Scandinavians would be best example. For me, the Pleiadians look, if you remember, I think it is the Lord of the Rings. Uh, there, were, there were elves in Lord of the Rings. Do you remember, like, blondes with uh, long hair, elves? To me, it's just the perfect image of Pleiadians. They're, on one hand, they're very cold. On the other hand, they're very spiritual, very smart, and emotional in their way, very different way. But they have emotions, just very different, very, not even snobbish, but very elevated, very high. So humans for them are barbarians, but on the other hand, uh, the main culture of Pleiades um, is from the star Tigeta. Uh, the planet is called Era, the third planet, on the star Tigeta of Pleiades. And Era and Terra are like sisters. Era, Terra, Terra is Earth, Era is their planet. And they follow us very tightly, very closely. They even have... Uh, their fashions modeled after Earth fashions. So there is, uh, they, they, they know our culture in superficial way, but they, they follow the culture. And they make fun of us, but they love us, and they help in many ways. I have tons of relatives here. Many Pleiadian souls are incarnated here, so it's one, one of the connections. And the second connection is genetic. We have common ancestors, and some of the Pleiadians just come here 
and live on Earth. That simple. I, I know a person whose father is Pleiadian. You know, that, that's straightforward. The skin color could be very different. These days they are very advanced, so they can change the skin color at will. Now it's uh, pop uh, green color is popular, so uh, the ecological mo movement is popular, so they just absorb light and make chlorophyll and stuff like that. So they they are much more ecological than we are in this way. But they can be of any color they like. Same with hair color. Oh. The healing techniques are very much advanced medicine. Oh, I forgot to mention, they are obviously they are from another dimension. They are from a higher dimension, usually referred as a fourth dimension or fourth density. We are third dimension, third density, they are fourth dimension, fourth density. But the dimension numbering is so variable. Many people use, or many channels use very different numbering systems. So their medicine is very advanced. They use chemicals, drugs, uh, medications, technologies, very advanced. So when they come and do the therapy here, uh, they use their technologies transdimensionally. They can measure your different things, can affect different things. They can access your different inner system, inner system and so on. Um, uh, what else do I need to talk about Pleiadians? The humans are hybrids. The whole human race is a very hybrid race. We have ancient alien ancestors, main five races, and about 20 uh, minor races who contributed to our genome. So during the history they came to Earth, often it would be just uh, refugees from their wars, from different wars, they would come and make and settle on Earth. And because the Earth is different from their planets, they couldn't live directly on Earth without modifying themselves. So they could would have artificial domes, artificial climate, but then they would look for different aliens. They would look for uh, other ways to genetically adjust themselves so they're descendants, their children would be able to live on Earth without artificial climates, just to live naturally on Earth. So that's, the, that's how they hybridize themselves with primates from Earth, and uh, that's how the humankind was developed. So the Earth ancestors are our primate ancestors, but there is a lot of infusions from aliens. Now the main question, how is it possible that humans on Earth are also originated from Earth and from other planets is because their life is cross-seeded between different planets, mostly b some, by, some by aliens and some by angels and spirits. They just do a lot of designing and creation of different species. That's what they do. They nurture their life. They are gardeners. And at this stage of development, we have free will individually and collectively, and that's why they don't interfere much openly. Neither gods, nor angels, nor spirits, nor aliens, they leave us to ourselves. And if the human society as a collective, as a whole, doesn't invite them, they just offer and wait. Offer and wait until they are invited. And it is coming close. You can see the people are opening to that past. Every year there is more and more of this. Some of this is very dark, but some of this is very bright and nice. And healing is a wonderful, nice way of mm, connecting to the aliens. Mm. So I have a Pleiadian line, bloodline, coming from both my father and my mother, and many of my friends do. So when we find other Pleiadians, we just feel a similar vibe and similar mood. And uh, you know, many of us feel that we are not from the surf. We are just sort of hybrids serving here, voluntarily, voluntarily serving here. We came here to serve, but, but much of our genetics, much of our spiritual ancestry is from elsewhere. And it's normal. It's 
There are many of us here. Some are consciously understanding that we are hybrids. Some are not knowing that, but they're still hybrids, right? And many are just, you know, they don't accept it. Some, some just don't accept it. So we offer our help, but we don't force it. I think you're good now. Uh, I invite the next one to sit here. You can stay here if you like. If you feel like they're working on you, just stay here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Pleiadians. So why they're here, what do they want? Many things. Earth is absolutely unique in many ways. Absolutely unique. Many pla planets go through the same path, but Earth is unique in many ways. It's very full of very much full of life, and diversity is here is extraordinary. Because humans are not telepathically connected, there is so much diversity, and also some of this diversity is artificial, like separation by languages between different countries, separation by nationality, race, faith, uh, social status. There is so much separation. So one Earth uh, harbors tons of different cultures. And some of these cultures just become, you know, because they're isolated, they, one Earth is a home for flowering of many flowers. Obviously, we are going through the process of ascension. Obviously, ascension is going up and up and up, closer to the spirit. Um, and we end up in a world, in a dimension, in the density where our alien friends are. So we are shifting. And the estimates are that the shift will take a couple of generations and about maybe 50 years. We have already the seeds of the new dimension, new, new earth, new vibrations. And uh, by talking to our alien friends, we just learn a lot, lot more about this, how it is going to be in 50 years. Many things are already here and some things are coming. The main change is telepathy, telepathy, talking to each other without using voice. First it comes as empathy, just feeling somebody else's feelings, and it's already here. You are already empathic. You already feel others, people, other people's energies. So that's the first step. And then you can feel the thoughts, you can connect to your lover, friends just by tuning into their vibe. And if you do energy healing, you might also connect to them through healing and through energetic connection. So the second alien race, which is very close to me, very dear to me, are tall grades. Tall greys are very benevolent. They're called Yael. Very benevolent. Very high spirited. Very talented. And serving the humanity in many ways. They are closest to humanity genetically. Pleiadians are look closest to humans in many ways. But they have common ancestors, but they have evolved somewhat af apart from humans, so they have more, d more mutations, more difference from humans than Yael. Yael are created from humans, they are our descendants, they created from human DNA and from the gray DNA, so gray plus human created Yael race, tall grays. They're very advanced. They evolved much faster than we did. So they are 
in the four dimension, four density, but they are very talented, very spiritual, they're connected very spiritually, very much to higher dimensions. So they do some of, lots of energy healing, and they're wonderful healers, and they offer their services to human healers. They are basically, they work with human healers, part, doing the partnerships, and usually you would have, when you do Reiki, you could invite, and different healers would come, some of them would be Pleiadians, some would be Yael, some would be Arcturian, some would be Syrian, some would be Liran, and a few others. So we are working with these races, Pleiadian, Yael, Syrian, Liran, Arcturian. So that Reiki that which I showed where you use fingers to connect things, connect the spots, uh, that would be in, in big extent, in large extent, would be a yell way of doing Reiki. A yell way of doing Reiki. And here is another topic, hybridization. So hybridization program was going on Earth for all the life of humankind. Some of the hybrids live here, and some of the hybrids live up there. Some of the hybridization happened 100 years ago, some 200 years ago, and so on. Uh, our friends Pleiadians and Yael were part of this hybridization program. Yael were created through this hybridization program. And me and some of I, my friends, light workers, have children up there. And we miss our children, and we visit them once in a while in our astral travel. And we hope that soon we will meet them when the open contact happens. And we hope that this open contact will happen very soon, within 15 years. Hopefully much sooner, but within 50 years, we are pretty much sure it will happen. And first people to come here will be our children, which are already grown up, because the time there is different. So our children in, at large usually are already of adult age. And until recently, until about two years ago, this hybridization was secret and people didn't really have much a say about, didn't say the physical minds of the people, didn't, didn't participate in this hybridization program. But last couple of years, we asked our friends to take only volunteers. So if you wish to have children up there, you just say so and work with them to create those children. And uh, if you don't wish, they wouldn't force you. There is enough volunteers to have children up there. The reasons are different. First, it's just fun to create a child. It just you feel, you feel cold, you feel called to do that. You feel cold to do that and you feel love, you feel that creative energy, you feel that it is absolutely beautiful to have a child up there, and these children grow up in these cultures, Pleiadian, Yael, Lyran, Arcturian, and so on. And they are telepathic. They are in this four density, in this different dimension. They, are, they will live hundreds of years. The lifespan there is longer. And some of these children visit us here, Yes, they, they physically can live here on Earth for hours, uh, and then they have to come back because it's, it's not easy to be in this density, in this environment, but they visit and walk on the streets, adults. There is many stories of meeting the hybrid children. <laughs> they look a little bit different. Their vibe is a little bit different, and the questions they ask sometimes, or the things they do is showing that they're, they don't, they're not from this world. And indigo crystal children are born right now here on Earth and have been born for the last many years, so some of them are adults. But these carry more of the alien DNA, more of telepathic abilities, more of psychic abilities, and it's another way of them helping us to ascend, another way to transform the humanity, to get the talents awakened and get the humanity healed from many problems. The new generation will solve these problems by 
by shifting up, becoming more happy, more harmonious, and uh, uniting the humanity into one global collective network of friends. That's simple. And invite questions. Is it too weird? Or other way around? You know all of that. Nice, thank you. Thank you. Um, some of my friends, they just are there. They go there like every night and their time is different. So they just can spend there a week and be absent here for five minutes. So I just recently kind of, we, we have this conversation all ongoing for two years now. We have a big community of few hundred people and they talk to each other. It's wonderful how we found each other. And I'm a co-founder of the community. It's called Human Colony. It's another story, but it's called humancolony.org. And the, the most exciting part is galactic languages. The aliens are not permitted by many regulations to give us physical proof, but they can give us some miracles here and there. And galactic languages is something which is already here, have been here for many years. People just talk alien languages, Pleiadian, Arcturian, Yael, Liran, uh, Angelic, Elohim, Elohim language, uh, Fendori, and many others. And some of people thought for, for the life, for the whole life, some of them are old people already, that they're crazy, they have the language, they can write something, and they have no clue what it means. And then here online, on our community, they just meet the whole big team of like ongoing chat. People talk this alien languages several times a week. Uh, we have ongoing um, webinars and hangouts. Some of them published, some of them unpublished. Video chat where people just talk about their experiences, talk languages. It's, it's fascinating. And um, I was, I don't speak them yet, a little bit maybe. But um, when we have like nine people in the chat, and all of them speak Arcturian, and some of them can translate, and they play like a fairy tale, they just read it, taking turns, they know what to say next, and someone can translate what's the whole fabula of the, uh, fabula of the, of the story, like um, Three Little Piglets or something of that sort. I mean, for me, it is absolute, <laughs> that is here, it's all on record. We found that after before a community was founded, there was a few records on YouTube where people several years ago, they recorded their alien languages and they sound identical, same language. So Arcturian Reiki, Arcturian don't like to show themselves, don't like to tell about themselves much. We know that they're orange color and they're not looking human much. They might have basic human shape, humanoid shape, but um, they look very strange and they don't show much up here. They are very highly spiritual, they're not even physical very much, but they play a big role in uh, coordinating other races. So it's a big alliance of Arcturian and all the ones I mentioned, Yael, Lyrans, Pleiadians, Fendorians. And um, there is Arcturian Consul and so on. So they Reiki, when they come through the channelers, they, they talk in a very high pitch voice, very fast, and they uh, connect different points, acupuncture points, and sell, send, and send the, the energy impulses, and they feel what comes back. And, as, and they also pray, while they're walking through the body, they, they talk the prayer, and analyze what happens and send the symbols and the uh, healing affirmations. That's basically how it works. I don't do Arcturian Reiki, but I have it done on me and it feels very blissful, very enlightened. The Liran Reiki is other way around. Liran Reiki is very heart-centered, heart-felt. 
Lirans, to me, they... Uh, I don't know how much you're into Star Trek. Are you into Star Trek? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, thank you. In Star Trek, there are Klingons. For me, Lirans are very much the character of... They're peaceful, but their character is of Klingons, to me. They, they, they reject that. They say they're different. But for me, it's, that's how they feel. Very heartfelt, very strong, very focused on the honor and stuff. Very spiritual. So for them, it is their heartfelt desire to help. And they push the energy. Like, so that's how they do it. Like they push. And they do much of the movement in the air, but then they kind of collect the energy and push it. That's the way the Lyrans would do the Reiki. The Yael would be this with the fingers, and Lyrans would be like, and the sound they make. So that is channeled, basically. Uh, people channel them. People invite them to come through. And uh, so when you do the Reiki, you energy healing, you would not only your client would go into meditative state, you go into meditative state. You know many healers do that. The most typical would be the Thai body work. Many of the healers just go into meditative state. When they do that body work, they would meditate and let the energy move themselves. Without, they would do it intuitively without thinking much. They would be absent meditative. So that's the same thing in... Um, Galactic Reiki, you would invite the energies to come through. And very often, people would say, the patients would say that while I was working on them, they had more than two hands on them, there was more hands. And sometimes, like, I would finish and I would leave, leave the patient on the Reiki table and go wash my hands, take a breath, take a sip of tea, and come back. And I, I would say, you know, they, they would say that they were thinking that I'm in the room and I'm still doing the Reiki while I was away. <laughs> so that's what you do. That's the galactic Reiki. You feel these energies, just learn to feel their presence. To me, again, as I described, that the heaven is here. They talk to me here. Heaven is here. Um, buzz in the fingers. I invite them. The energy comes. Sometimes it comes so strong, so bright. It's kind of just because you invite it and they come right away, that for me it is a proof that that's, that's them. I don't have direct image or words, but some of my friends do. For them it's just kind of the, the no. And I have that knowing without the confirmation and words and, uh, and uh, visuals. But in, in the meditation I sometimes have their images, and for me they look very earthly, very earthly for me. They come like like humans very naturally. Like that. Alright, we have another thing there. In our community, there is an application page. It's my invention, but basically, I said, you know, if we cannot talk directly to you, how about we just make electronic form and whatever we want to send to you, we'll just type there and, uh, and you will just check our electronic site. And it works. For them to check our electronics is very easy. And even more nice, it's, it's uh, anonymous. If you don't want to, to put your name there and humans to know about your name, you just can, you know, just type whatever you want, send it there, and they will know that you, that was you, but, but humans would not. You know, for some it is important. And there is also an email address which I created. Sign up to go at gmail.com. So you can write to them anything you like. Um, and what we hear from many of our members, usually people come to our site and they apply for certain things, like to visit them and, or for, for visits from them and stuff like that. They just kind of ask. In the next couple nights, they come. And they come very strongly, very much, and people remember the visits. Not all of them, but again, it's enough to invite, and uh, they come. Next thing is ah, 
energy flows nicely. Hmm. The main thing is that they don't read your mind. It's a common misconception that spirits, God, and uh, aliens can read your mind. They could, but they don't. Nice ones don't enter your mind. It's your space, and they respect your privacy. So if you wish to speak to them in your mind, you have to really call for them and speak in very clear language the message. So for me, it sounds like that. My dear friends, Pleiadians, or I know them by name, so my dear Tape would be my friend. Yeah, please come and help heal this client, this patient, or help myself, or just do, I want to invite you in my meditation, please visit me, I want to connect to you. And same with my hybrid children, I invite them to visit, and sometimes they come, and I feel the light, and the vibration, and the energy, and I say, welcome, thank you for coming. Sometimes it's so obvious that they came, right after invitation. And same thing you do with the, with the saints and ascended masters. You can invite Jesus, the God, the God is the creator, the creatress, um, archangels. My favorite is Metatron. I feel so happy to communicate to Metatron. It's just my passion. I, I really feel very happy and, it's, and he responds well. It's my vibe, Metatron. Not are many others. Oh, any questions so far? The Galactic Reiki also has symbols. You can Google them. There is a Galactic Reiki site by uh, someone else in Australia. Her name is Starina from the star Starina. Starina in Australia has Galactic Reiki symbols. You can find them there. We just started our Re Galactic Reiki school. We uh, did first two classes. Uh, we're doing third class online. All the classes are online because our community was online. Is November 16th. It's Reiki 2 already for Reiki 1 practitioners. And we just started channeling the symbols. So symbols are coming through two channelers. And it will be very interesting to compare them, three of them, from these our two channelers uh, and to Starina's symbols, to see if there are common ones. But if you just look for alien symbols online, there is tons of them. Some of them are for healing. Some of the symbols require attunement, so can use them. Galactic Ray. Syrians are, uh, different races have different influences in different areas of the earth. Syrians ap apparently have a lot of influence. In, they had colony, the Syria is one of their colonies. Surprise, Syria is after Sirius. <laughs> India is very much Syrian tribe from Syrian colony. Uh, there are also Dagon tribe in Africa who still remember that they came from Sirius. They still remember their star alignments and star stars and planets in the series. They pass that tradition what is what came from the series and some other tales and stories they just know. Um, Syrians don't have much of hybridization going on with Earth people, but right now, but because they shifted to higher dimensions, they are not much compatible anymore with Earthons, but. Their healing is very nice, they're very spiritual, and you can invite their healing energies and communication from Sirius. Uh, Orion, I have to talk about Orion. So Orion is, right now, is uh, mixed. Orion's, you know, it's a big, big star system with a lot of different races. Nordics come from Orion, so they would look close, uh, they would have, typically, traditionally, they would have albina appearance, very light eyes, absolutely white hair, very white skin, and so on. But obviously, their descendants have all different varieties. It could be like blue eyes, black skin, and so on. Um, 
we had recently we had pretty bad relationship with Orions. Uh, they were not very good friends to Earth, and they tried to control Earth in a, in the old ways. So they had their representatives in uh, the top levels of different corporations, top levels of military, top levels of secret organizations, financials, and so on. Right now, most of them are gone because they just crossed certain galactic regulations and were forced to leave. So uh, these negative Orions had to leave, but they were on Earth for a long time, so they have the knowledge of Earth. So the positive people from that culture are helping our friends, so some of the Orions are positive, and they have the biggest knowledge of modern politics and finances. They have that knowledge and practical understanding how things are done. Our Yale people and Pleiadians are pretty much lost. When I speak to them about our politics and finances, they want to help, but their understanding is like, like alien. They don't understand. They, don't even, they can't even think about that. It's so foreign to them. Like, they're telepathic and lying is not a good option in telepathy. You can feel when a person is dishonest. So all the deception in human society just is above their understanding. Like, we have the deception everywhere, right? You know, right? Like advertisements, <laughs> you know, in the store, commercials, everything is deceptive. Like, even the fake, you know, even the nice things about politeness, you have to deceive people by not showing your true feelings, not showing your true uh, intentions, your true self, your true story. You have, to, you have to hide yourself all the time. So in uh, higher level society, in alien societies, future Earth, that would be, would be much more natural. You still are polite to people, but you are polite because you love them. <laughs> That's simple. You, you can show yourself because you are very nice. You can tell about yourself very nice. Like, People in love, they don't hide that they love. They say, mm -hmm. I want you as a mate. I want to have a child from you. That's simple. Nothing of the <laughs> old ways of hiding your feelings and, and stuff of that. Because when you're telepathic, you cannot hide. Any questions so far? All right. Oh, they just come. Uh, we have that. We have that uh, group which meets every Tuesday, I think, and it's called Galanguage, Galactic Language Hangout, and they just come and speak. You don't learn it like like you would learn human languages. Nothing of the sort. You just start speaking, bubble it. Like people just start bubbling, like a child would bubble, and then it would come through. And many people first start speaking galactic language and then and then they start channeling because after the galactic language is the first way of connecting to the spirit and obviously you invite it, you invite it. Again, as usual, you just pray and invite it. And uh, and later it just comes, you start speaking. I I'm so busy I can't even play these games, but bubbling is easy, blah 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 and uh, you just start invite it, it starts coming to you. Some of the languages are sign languages, alien sign languages. That would be maybe the easiest way for me to, to, to connect. Just for me, I love playing with energies around. I would show you with my fingers right now, but the energy flows so well I can't really stop. It flows perfectly. Can you feel it? It flows really well here. All right. Incarnations. The key understanding is incarnation, right? Incarnating. The soul comes here to get experience. Right? You know about that, right? The soul comes here to get experience. And this world is an illusion, obviously. This world is illusion. It's a very good illusion, very strong illusion. It's really hard to tweak it. Apparently, you most of my 
people listeners have seen the movie Matrix, the Matrix, yes, yes. So don't, yes. So you don't, I don't have to explain. So the idea of the Matrix is very strong, a very correct one. It just you know in the Matrix it was evil machines that made it. In uh, our understanding, New Age understanding, it is us who made it. The Creator made it. So the world was created from top to bottom and from bottom to top. From top to bottom it is the spirit, the, 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 the creator, as the story goes, wanted to discover himself, to see himself, and divided itself in yin and yang, masculine and feminine, or how, how you want it, light and dark, how you want to name it. It is somewhere in the very beginning. So it is a conscious division of one unity into parts, something outside of yourself. And then it became, and then it started to evolve, and it, evol it evolved from top, it was first very spiritual, very um, untangible, untouchable, and non-material, but at some point it evolved, evolved, and evolved to the level that it created the matter. And then the matter world was created and evolved from the bottom to top, from uh, elementary particles to atoms to molecules to things, and then the whole galaxy, and the time was created. The time is an artificial construct, which allows learning. And learning is a wonderful thing. You can evolve when you have the time you can evolve. So. The, and in our reality, the time is linear. You basically are stuck with time. You can shift back and forth. But in uh, fourth density, in the alien world, it's much more fluid. You can go to the evening and go to the morning of the same day. You are sh shifting back and forth. You can shift even from one timeline to another timeline and communicate with the spirits, communicate with your uh, spirit guides, communicate with um, angels. It's wonderful, and uh, we know for sure that because we have so many confirmations, we can speak to them, we can speak through them to angels, we can speak to our deceased friends, and so on. Uh, we have, in our community, we have channeled many known spirits and people and ascended masters. I'm very grateful, you know, Jesus came to us, Muhammad, Buddha, Confucius, um, Archangels, an angel, my friend Angel, a fairy came, uh, one of the most popular videos, a uh, couple of visits by the fairy. Um, from humans, I am very honored by the visits of John Lennon and um, and Martin Luther King came a couple times, and a few other historical figures came, and it, it felt very real, and we have a relationship right now. So we invite them, and obviously our alien friends come and, um, and speak to us. All right, incarnation. So the soul comes here, and for healing it is important to understand how it works. So the soul comes here to get an experience. And this life is has programmed in it sicknesses, disbalances, and different planetary movements and different energy movements. At some point things go uh, progress, and some point the things go retrograde, and whatever is built kind of is is being shaken. At some point, like the moon goes, grows, and you can build things. Your projects start with a new moon, then they grow, and then um, the moon wanes, and different things just fall apart. And this, right now, we have this fall energies where things become darker, certain things fall apart. So focus on the focus on the positive. Focus on what is dear to you. Make a choice. It's a time for choosing. Choose the main vibration of yours. Choose what is most dear to you and let other things fall out. And that relates directly to the idea of healing 
which in large extent is letting things go, letting things go, detoxify, de uh, detoxify and purify yourself, becoming pure again, more crystalline again, more harmonious again, more beautiful again, and the key word here is coherence, which is another word for harmony, meaning things go, resonate well, purified, crystallize and become a liquid crystal, energy crystal, perfect. The human body, physical body, is built on the blueprint of the etheric body, which is complex. Human body has the DNA, and as you know, it is a hybrid DNA, which has earth genes, alien genes, a lot of different programs which are dormant and silent. And the life traumas, the life experience here in the Western society is uh, blocking many of the things. So that process of purification, unblocking things, activating things, letting old programs go, healing old traumas is the key of the Reiki and energy healing and galactic Reiki. So much of what you do is nothing outside. You don't do anything outside other than just intending things, inviting things, intending and inviting and again thinking. You start your prayer from, th from thank you and you end your prayer with thank you. That's the key. Because the thank you Gratitude state is the most healing state. When you see the bliss, you see the blessing, you see that things are going your way, you see in everything negative, in everything negative, in the darkness, even in the sickness, even in the death, you see the positive side. How can you see the positive side in the death? The death is not the death. The death is the death of the physical body. You keep going. The, the soul is eternal. Your life experiences don't go anywhere. They all are recorded. You will have it forever. You create it now. You will have forever your life with you, your identity with you. You don't lose it. The death is just a transition back home. You come back home and you have the whole life which you can replay in any way you like. You, you replay the different scenarios in any way you like. Uh, from your perspective, if you made a mistake, you can fix it there in the spirit world and so on. Is it familiar with, to you, right? In all of that. I'm done with you, I guess. Sit here, uh, enjoy the energies. All right, who is next? Thank you. Absolutely, yes, yes. Um, the only difference, I mean, it is the same Reiki, in Reiki you skin. Um, so let me just describe the process. Yes. Um, usually you start from the, I start from the head because it just feels good for, good to me. I just feel absolutely happy. So uh, before scanning, I open the, the energies and they flow right now pretty well. Oh, wonderfully. Yes. This head is taking a lot of energy and it just feels good. Wow. So I started opening the energies, uh, open my hands, open the uh, energy flows, opening the chakras, and when it's open, then I scan. And the question I ask is, how can I be of service? Basically, you can't fix everything for the person at once. So you have to foc focus on one thing. You have to focus on the main message, main answer. So my principle is, what's the next step? And sometimes this next step would be physical, you just go and heal something. But in most cases it would be physical and a learning experience for me and for the person. 
So usually sometimes it is certain answer that is coming. And um, in many cases, like with obesity, the main question I would ask is how much television do you watch? <laughs> and that's kind of, you know, just just works. You know, sometimes it's more unusual things, but but you know, how much television do you watch and how do you watch it? And then, um, you know, how about you switch from streaming uh, from uh, things which go, like from programs just to streaming on demand, basically, from streaming all the time to streaming on demand when you control when you wa when you watch, what you watch, and at any moment, you can scroll forward, scroll backward, and uh, cancel if you like, not being controlled by it. Um, and then you just ask the questions and they tell you. you. Just talk to them. I mean, that's how it works. Galactic Reiki is talking to our friends. You talk to the spirits, talk to the aliens. And for me, sometimes it's obvious who is giving the answer, but some, most often, I don't really... It doesn't matter who is giving the answer. I invite my friends, and sometimes it is, the invitation is, I thank you, the universe, thank you, uh, the source, for the opportunity to be of service. And I invite my friends, uh, uh, higher friends, to help, uh, to work from my hands, to help the healing. That's simple. So I invite them, and, uh, and they come. And you know they come because things just happen. I, uh, one of my, you know, very enlightening experiences was very simple. Uh, I, I do a lot of Reiki share. Reiki share is when you, you're familiar, right? When you have uh, several Reiki beds and people come and some people get on the bed, some people get around and, uh, and, and then they switch. So the Reiki share, there was four beds in the room. And usually when I do my Reiki, I close my eyes and do it meditatively, sometimes in the air, sometimes hands on their body, on the touching. And this time it was both hands were in the air. And at some point my hand just jumped, just like physically jumped. And I'm sure I didn't move it. It was just something else moved it. And I opened my eyes and I saw that on another bed, the lady just looked at the clock, just she lifted her head and looked at the clock. So that was it. Her head on the other bed moved and my hand responded because all people in the room are connected to each other. It is, you know, it is, that's, that's how things are. Especially when you're open to that, when you do Reiki, when you're invited, it's all interconnected. Any more questions here? I would show you things with hands, but that so flows so well, I don't want to get them off. So that's my, my main principle. If it flows well, don't, don't bother it. Uh -huh. Stay there, serve there. How, so what do you do if, if you feel pain when you do Reiki? Um, you, you, oh, it, I mean, the pain can come from the person. If the person is in pain, you just kind of take it. Sometimes you don't intend it, but sometimes it just happens. If you get connected, you take it. So how to to release it? A certain amount you just can tolerate, and uh, you know how to get rid of it later. So you just can meditate later. And usually, because you do Reiki, because you are into this healing art, it is. I can go now. It is um, you are protected in many ways. And they they help you you like whatever you take on yourself, they help you recover after that. So we, my friends and I, we don't we are not afraid to go and heal cancer patients, do Reiki in the hospital with. Not I don't do it often, but I'm not afraid. So we do the service. We just go and and um, offer things, and we help our friends visiting in the hospital. You just take as much as you can, but you don't, I mean, it's your principle, you're responsible for yourself, so don't take more than you can. So you have to know how much you can take. Sometimes it's only a few minutes, it's, an, it's sufficient. It is, the Reiki is not what you do, it's basically you bring an intention, which is to heal. You bring the vibration, which is yours, and you introduce the patient to your friendly energies. You provide your hands, they come through the hands, and then they, uh, 
they can work by themselves. You don't, you are not needed there anymore. You can go. So just that introduction is sufficient. That's what you do, I do with you, just a little bit. Introduce to the vibration and then it flows wonderfully. So the vibration is here and then what you do is, is up to you. You can hold on to it, you can amplify it. In your meditation, if you feel the light coming, you don't stand there and wait for it to come to you. You just step towards it. You kind of move towards it. You invite it. You amplify it. It comes to you. You come to it. You do the steps towards each other. You penetrate each other. You unite with that light. What was the question? No more question? So very often I send the energy between two hands. And you know what you're working on, the organs. And uh, each organ has certain symbolic meaning. Like liver, spleen, kidneys. Uh, diaphragm is essential. So basically what happens to the humanity right now is ascension. And again, it goes through years, possibly, yeah, you will, you already see the, the results. You already see that humanity is shifting. Things lighten up. So this will continue for your lifetime. It is a continuous process, but humanity will transform. There will be crises is for sure, the crisis is right now, the crisis will, will continue, but the new humanity is being developed right now, the new people, you are the new people, so you are the new humanity. So take on yourself, you, it's your free choice, take on yourself that service, and do the shifting between the old humanity and the new one, learn both ways, learn the transition from the old to the new, and help others to do it. And part of the transition is the transition between the solar plexus chakra, which is right here, the solar plexus, under the, but under the ribs, just a little below the ribs, and the heart chakra up here. And the transition is from old hierarchical society, where is the division, trust, mistrust, uh, submission, dominance, uh, aggression, all, all, the, all the human stuff, deception, to the heart where is all acceptance, love, and no words, no words anymore, it's, it's the vibration, it is something beyond the logic, it is what you say, my heart tells me something, it is it is the feeling which is not expressed in words. And we, the old humanity, the lowest three chakras, the root chakra, the sacral chakra, and solar plexus chakra, old humanity, is separated from the new humanity by the veil, the veil of forgetfulness, the veil of not knowing. We don't even Many of, huma of humans don't have even connection to the spirit. They are blocked from the spirit. They cannot speak to the aliens. They cannot speak to the spirit. So they're blocked from them. So that's called the veil. And this veil corresponds to the diaphragm. This diaphragm is right above the, the I don't know the word, but basically internal organ, volume of internal organs, area of internal organs. I am sure there is a medical term for that term for that. So, uh, now the heart shifted to the heart is, is the new humanity. The heart is acceptance, telepathy, empathy, everything. So that's the shift from control to trust, from control to trust. Obviously doing too much trust practically is impractical because, you know, I exercised that, that trust and I bought a car which was counterfeit and it was all broken. So don't, uh, don't be impractical. Keep your old chakras, keep your old knowledge. Be practical in old ways, but still open your heart and learn how to connect with your heart to good things, to good things. 
the traumas of childhood, the traumas of upbringing is inequality, an ability to trust yourself, uh, the trauma of being unloved by parents. It's everywhere. It's uh, even I, you know, as a parent, I find all the time I watch myself. There is so much in the culture when you first tell the child that they are loved and then they tell the child that they misbehaved and they've been punished and you take away the, uh, your life. And the child doesn't understand how it is possible to be loved and not loved at the same time. That is a big trauma. When the child is crying, it's, it's, it's a trauma by itself. I, you know, I always use my Reiki and my compassion to, uh, to stop the child from crying because the child didn't deserve that cry. That, um, distress then doesn't deserve the distress and uh, do the same when you drive and see the a car accident send your reiki just from the distance just send your reiki when you see a child crying in airport or the railway station or Walmart Walmart by some reason always have crying children it's just just the rules people who have who have who have um, you know that desire, you know, to have their children cry. They just bring them to Walmart and enjoy, you know, just, just you know, enjoy that energy which is negative of, of suffering. So send, send that energy. Obviously, you can't help them full way, but send a little bit. That little bit is sufficient. Again, very important for your galactic Reiki or Reiki, any healing, is the desire of the patient to be healed. Uh, when you sit here, thank you for being brave and sitting here and accepting this energy. You do the step forward and this commitment, consent, is absolutely essential. When you do the step forward, the, st the, s the spirit does many steps forward towards you and you get lots of proof, lots of evidence. When you become doubt, when you start doubting, when you go in doubt, um, they step backwards. So the, what I discovered, this what I'm telling you is real and unreal at the same time. Because it is the Matrix, as in the movie The Matrix, it has its internal program that when you trust it, it opens the veil for you. When you start mistrusting it, it closes it. That's how it works. So when I say I don't say it, but when I did in the past, when I said there is no aliens, they don't help me, they don't prove me, prove anything to me, they don't show, I asked them, please show in the sky, I am ready. I didn't. And when I did experiments, all the experiments show that it's not real. Nothing shows that they're real, it's like the evidence disappeared. And then there was a little bit left. And when I kind of started focusing on this positive little bit, I'm sure there was a spirit. I wasn't sure the aliens were there physically, because they weren't. They're not from this world. They're from a different dimension. So I, I was sure the spirit was there. When I focused on the spirit, I got so many confirmations back. So the spirit came back to me, and it's you know, they're knocking on on my shoulder all the time. They're helping all the time. They're giving me confirmations all the time. And when I'm thinking and moving forward towards them, they move forward toward me and then the aliens again. I get people who tell me the stories about their visits to their ships, their communications with my alien friends. They, they are friends there, they walk among them. They, they talk, they have relationships and so on. So then become, it becomes real. Again, it's, it's up to you where to make it real or not. So this is my first Person, right? You all have, sit, have been sitting here, right? right. So, um, the spirits, the confirmations. It's up to you what to choose. It's up to you. If you wish to be a hybrid, you're a hybrid. If you don't wish to be a hybrid, you wish to be an earthen, you're an earthen. If you wish to have Liran. Genetics, Liron genetic ancestry, you discover it in your past. If you wish to be of Orion, Pleiadian, and so on, you discover it in your past. The past is created now. 
by the focus of your attention, by your intention, you change the matrix. The matrix is built from now into the past. Your past changes from what you're interested in. It is even more obvious when you look at the countries. Each country has its own history and Russians truly believe in their history and the whole world is centered on Russia. They don't really pay attention to the history of the rest of the world. Everything is within Russia. You know, the world was created in Russia. Russia is the only answer. Same thing with China, same thing America, same thing other countries. They have different pasts. We are humans having very different pasts living at the same time. It's just amazing how the focus, the focus of your attention changes your history changes your who you are now so it's up to you whether to choose it one way or another the world is that flexible these days the world is a fairy tale these days focusing focusing on positive is absolutely essential i learned the hard way really when i went down sp down the spiral all things went down and fell apart and I was sort of positive but suspicious and I sort of positive but there was what's that word? yes and there is another word resentment resentment against God resentment against aliens and the mirror the life is a mirror that just reflected to me my resentment everything proved to me that things are against me the job situation the money situation the friends and so on and then you just have to choose when things are not looking good you just have to choose to smile and say whatever the main mantra which I what's that word uh, preach the, man, the main mantra which I preach is whatever 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 I love you anyway I allow that anyway when your lover just hangs out with other people, when your lover goes away with someone else, just say, whatever, I love you anyway, I'm for service. Whenever you want me, fine, I'm here. Not in practical way, not my wallet, but, but my heart. <sighs> I mean, that is very healing. Accepting death physical death as a fact of life, it's part of life. Accepting other people, even the enemies, just forgiving them in the heart, not practically. Practically don't give them your social security number and your credit card number. But in the heart, just whatever, fine, I love you all. You know, I love the whole humanity. You are on my way, but I love you anyway. <laughs> I love humans, but you are uh, prevent me from loving everybody, right? But forgiving yourself, forgiving others, understanding that you are loved, you deserve deserve to speak, you deserve to ask. How I was seeking for a Reiki job, it was, I was depressed, I didn't have a job, I didn't find, have money, I had family, loving family, but not, uh, not no job for several years. I just decided, it was hard, hard decision, just to walk in Reiki offices and say, here's my resume, are you interested? And one day I could do only one visit. It was like above my capacity to do more than one. And sending by email is easier, but they never respond to emails. You have to send email and then call next day, say, I sent you email, I offer da 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 da. And uh, working in is also, you don't get a job where you walk in, but you learn their vibration. So if you have a place where you stay, you have an office which you want to work, maybe you start from another office. Just learn the art, learn the vibration, learn what is needed, learn their way of thinking by just action. It's like it's called in Russian, it's called uh, intelligence by attack. You just attack them and then you discover the intelligence. They discover what you need to find out. Uh, proactive, proactive.
proactive. Talk to people, ask you know, do, if they know anything, if they give, can give you the calling people and just asking them for advice. Like calling Reiki people and saying, you know, how did you find your job? How did you end up? Offer them something, but sometimes you don't offer them anything. Out of five people you ask, maybe one will give you the key answer. And the key answer was actually Groupon, Living Social, it works. It just, it is, doesn't pay, doesn't pay. You don't, you know, you get even, you, they pay, it pays just enough to pay for the office rent. But it creates the flow. That's how it get got out. It creates the flow. The people come to you. And just being helpful, I mean, you are serving and no one, no one of my Reiki patients came by chance. Just no one. The spirits, the hand of the God, hand of spirits was absolutely clear. That person came for that reason. That person came for that reason. It was so obvious. Not, not, all, not many of them came back. Some come back. Thank you, you guys, you girls for coming back. Some come back, but it, you know, one one vibration, one introduction to my spirit vibration is sufficient. I just introduce here are my friends, here are my my vibrations, meet them, and uh, and then you take it from here. I'm done. So now everything works fine. Now the the job of one of you was interested in the job of receptionist. I visited one of the Reiki offices and there I had, by some coincidence, I had to sit there like almost for an hour to wait for an owner of the Reiki practitioner or, you know, she's a chiropractor to come out. So I was waiting and waiting and it was so educational to listen how the receptionist works. She was always talking and on the phone, blah, 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 with real physical face-to-face -face clients. Every conversation became a sale, and every client who already went to her was retained and got a plan where he would come regularly. And sometimes you see on their face when she and the owner just met their eyes, this client is obnoxious, but we still give him what he wants, and we keep him. <laughs> the looks were like, it was a masterpiece of how they worked. It was a masterpiece. And it was actually very serving, very loving. They did their job and the people got what they wanted. And part of that, what they wanted, they just wanted to share their troubles and they got a friendly ear to listen. So, so walking in and just speaking to people, you always are entitled to ask. And in most cases when I ask, you know, very rarely people look, gave me strange looks. In most cases, they understood because they walked in the same shoes before they ended up on their jobs. Uh, like uh, in one place, I just walk on the street. I look. It looks like possibly a Reiki office. I walked in. They, it wasn't a Reiki office, but there was someone there who knew where Reiki office was. They sent me there. I went in, and then there we we ended up in a wonderful relationship, which didn't last forever, but it was a wonderful relationship. Now it's over, but. Yeah, by the way, I'm moving to San Diego in uh, in a month. If you have friends in San Diego, you can introduce. I would welcome that. <laughs> San Francisco. Uh huh. Welcome to uh, Chicago is special. It's one of the most contrasty cities. So much of darkness, so much of negative energy, so much of nonsense and yet wonderful people maybe because of the contrast because it was pulled so much into the darkness there is so much light here as well i met an alien here like like a really not practically not literally but what's the other word symbolically just a godly being it's just just amazing uh, it's more than an alien just somebody like a, an ascendant master working here <laughs> speaking, channeling and stuff. It's just, you know, what do you do if you meet an alien on the street and it's like very enlightened? What do you do? Or, or in a Reiki office or whatever. What can you do with them? You just, you are thankful. You have gratitude. You already experienced that. What, what else can you do? An angel, like if you have a visit by an angel. Some of my friends had a visit by an angel. Usually in a suicide position. Most people who were miraculously 
surviving suicides or car crashes they actually died and then were pulled back because their contract and other spiritual ideas suggest that they have to continue energy flows wonderful okay how do you go from here first stop stop worrying stop being afraid be practical be afraid on practical level be cautious but in the heart stop being worried stop dwelling in the darkness stop dwelling in unhappy love bless everybody bless everybody and if um, I, I see so many girls who love, who cry over their cell phone when they receive this sort of message just block it block it don't take whatever is good don't take whatever is worrying just say thank you I'm in a bliss I am connected to God's I bless you that's it that's the first thing see the positive side everywhere sometimes it, it requires to be very creative to see the positive side in the negative things like my friend's dog died how can you see a positive side here obviously look in the past the dog lived with him or with her for the life of the dog it was a bless a blessing so if you look from timeless perspective you look the whole you see the whole life not only that moment of transition the body died yes it is sad but it was a friendship before if you scroll the movie backwards then the dog first is old and it becomes younger and it becomes younger becomes stupid or becomes a puppy and then goes away right and what is worse, going in one direction or another direction, from puppy to the old, from the old to the puppy? I would say normal ways, mm, not humane. You don't want to lose the puppy, you want to lose the dog, an old dog. <laughs> right? So it all depends on the perspective. I come from the family of rabbis through many, many generations. And spiritually, I think I had, I was told I had many priests' past lives and shamans and stuff so what we do is we officiate the marriages the births and the deaths for us it is natural that's what you see the whole life you officiate the marriages the births and the deaths and when people are, when people are sick you, you do reiki energy healing and spiritual healing in many cases right now in Chicago Chicago is very young I have tons of young people who come to me and they have nothing wrong with them. I mean, how can you heal a person who is healthy? Usually what they need, they need an introduction to energies, introduction to the miracle. They need to prove that the miracle is there. And often it is mostly what I'm talking to you right now. The idea is about reincarnation, about the purpose of life. What is the purpose of life? What's your idea of the purpose of life? What's the purpose of life? <laughs> All right. So, uh, of the individual life, there is no predetermined purpose. You define it for yourself. It is your area of control. You define it. It's your choice, your decision, your, and you can define it every moment differently. You are not obligated to define it one way or another for the whole lifetime. There is no predetermined purpose of the life on earth. Obviously, there is some tendencies, some ideas. But for your personal life, you are in control. You are in a driving seat. You are driving. What is higher self? You're familiar with the idea of higher self, right? Future self, higher self. Uh, it is you in the future after all lives. Uh, with the experience of all past lives. Your past life, future past lives, remembering everything. A very wise you. Before you shift out of this bigger reality to the next level, you serve to yourself all the past lives of yourself as a higher self. It is an entity of the same vibration, same character, but with, with all lessons learned. And it serves to you as a guide and 
it actually is responsible for your lessons and your life path and your luck and mischiefs in many cases and the best thing you can do is making friends with them becoming friends with them you can speak to them through the channelers through the mediums you just invite your higher self you learn who who it is what's their how do they speak with their character it's fun to speak to yourself but it's it's nice to speak to yourself it's it's a bliss and then when you meditate it's a good idea just to invite them to you to your to you consciously basically invite to enter your body higher self is so much bigger than you then can fit in your body so the whole higher self cannot fit in any way it's like huge complex enlightened godly being for each of you but you invite and for me it usually feel like buzzing in the whole body when it enters it's goosebumps and buzz in the whole body and usually I can't even think much I I'm kind of so happy I say welcome thank you and, and that's all I say and I kind of go away but that's one of the main things you can do <sighs> other proofs of the law of attraction you're familiar with law of attraction are you and all, all, obviously there is a law, law of repulsion but similar things attract to each other opposite things rep mm, incompatible things repel so if you purify yourself if you become very pure very enlightened bad things just don't come to you the whole world the whole world can fall apart the war can start and if you are in the bliss you won't even notice you won't be even here noticing things in america since 1929 there was no big hell happening in Europe and Russia there is much more recent things where really bad things happen and they are much closer to us much closer so we have friends and family and stories of really bad things happen and you just see some people suffer a lot and there were some enlightened people in the middle of the nightmare of the of the world war or or the concentration camps and they just went through that seeing the positive side not being afraid not being being practical but not being drawn down being strong inside being pure inside they just went through that survived that and continued to carry the light so that idea of being pure and carrying the light and making the light burn inside of you making strong inside of you that's the idea in this time of the year if you have the option play with the light burn the fire play uh, fire in the fireplace the candle the campfire outside campfire on the beach don't be practical don't be caught by police on the grill that's permitted on the grill you can burn the firewood which you bought on the grill in the permit in the permitted time of the uh, day do that and learn from it the fire requires care when I see the people making the fire I can see them that if they energetically reach the fire is happy if they are vampires who are happy the fire wouldn't even burn it would make a lot of smoke and it wouldn't burn and uh, to help it you have to put nice wood you have to take care make sure the wood is placed properly make sure there is not too much wood not too wet wood you don't put too much of the fuel and then it burns perfectly and if you blow a little bit of air it helps if you burn too much on a little fire it will blow it away so same thing you do with your inner fire absolutely the same principle just feed it well stay focused stay focused uh, don't make too many small fires make one focused bright fire feed it well and let it be happy and well cared you have to protect it from certain things you have to be pure in what you do and what you absorb if some bad things come to you and you don't want to focus on them just let them pass through or reflect them or dodge them don't take them in television don't listen to that nonsense 
you don't have to be on this side or that side. That's the galactic Reiki. There is a third side. There is happy four-dimensional humanity that is coming through you. Be on the side of the new humanity. Don't be dragged into the conflicts which are very artificial. That versus that, where you realize both on the same side, both are fake, both are playing the drama which is pre-programmed fake. That is another word. Fake drama. Oh, yeah, you know, all these things, we, all these people and uh, parties and forces that pretend to be fighting each other, they all have direct communication lines, they all negotiate whose turn is to do which step, they all negotiate the steps which you take, you know, this 11-11 um, destruction of the Twin Towers was pre-programmed people who, who knew that it will happen, they withdraw their funds, they did uh, they, they, how they call it, uh, insured their property there and so on. It was a planned event and most of the events of smaller scale are the same things they are planned. The aliens are watching that closely, they are talking to the leaders, my hands are jumping now, they are talking to the leaders daily, they have direct communication lines, there are not, not always to the presidents, but there is always certain layer of command which is in consultation with the aliens and people. You can see that many of the leaders who are supposed to be on the top, right? They're supposed to be like the top leaders. They behave like they are under control of somebody else. They behave irresponsibly because somebody else is above them. Because there is certain aliens, certain undercover figures which are in control and it's all alright. We serve to the new humanity. We are working in a way which is good for everybody. We are working in a way which allows everybody to win. The humanity will survive and our alien friends demonstrated in many, in many times, many ways that self-destruction, self-suicide of the humanity is, will not be permitted. There is, this is the best evidence of their existence is when they, the saucers, when the saucers come and then just uh, turn off all electricity in the military bases and let the military nuclear rockets shoot in the air and disappear and, and, uh, and usually it is done to prevent the order to start the war. Usually when the war is closed, they just come and show, you know, we are here in control, we have stronger technology than yours, we can easily inactivate your weapons. So all this military conflict, all the military, human military uh, expenditures on uh, newest military how do you say, weapons is, is a pretense. Uh, they know that there is there is stronger force than them, they don't need the weapons, it's only the way to make money, not, not more than that. Alright, so the money will go away eventually and will be replaced by, we don't know what it is, but by some sort of economy which is based on ra more rational ways of doing that. And there will be a spiritual component in it. Uh, this spiritual component is usually referred as L, EL, like you elevated way in Chicago, L, and it is a spirit which serves financial purposes. So they will somehow be integrated in the economy and replace the money. I don't know the